Angle, Wikipedia article audio. 2D angles. 2D angle pairs. Identifying angles. Types of angles. 3D angles. In planar geometry, an angle is the figure formed by two rays, called the sides of the angle, sharing a common endpoint, called the vertex of the angle. Angles formed by two rays lie in a plane, but this plane does not have to be a Euclidean plane. Angles are also formed by the intersection of two planes in Euclidean and other spaces. These are called dihedral angles. Angles formed by the intersection of two curves in a plane are defined as the angle determined by the tangent rays at the point of intersection. Similar statements hold in space, for example, the spherical angle formed by two great circles on a sphere is the dihedral angle between the planes determined by the great circles. Angle is also used to designate the measure of an angle or of a rotation. This measure is the ratio of the length of a circular arc to its radius. In the case of a geometric angle, the arc is centered at the vertex and delimited by the sides. In the case of a rotation, the arc is centered at the center of the rotation and delimited by any other point and its image by the rotation. The word angle comes from the Latin word angulus, meaning corner. Cognate words are the Greek A 1 4th euro I superscript 3 I degree I. I I I, meaning crooked, curved, and the English word ankle. Both are connected with the Proto Indo European root asterisk ank, meaning to bend or bow. Euclid defines a plane angle as the inclination to each other, in a plane, of two lines which meet each other and do not lie straight with respect to each other. According to Proclus an angle must be either a quality or a quantity, or a relationship. The first concept was used by Eudemus, who regarded an angle as a deviation from a straight line, the second by Carpus of Antioch, who regarded it as the interval or space between the intersecting lines, Euclid adopted the third concept, although his definitions of right, acute, and obtuse angles are certainly quantitative. Individual Angles In mathematical expressions, it is common to use Greek letters to serve as variables standing for the size of some angle. Lowercase Roman letters are also used, as are uppercase Roman letters in the context of polygons. See the figures in this article for examples. In geometric figures, angles may also be identified by the labels attached to the three points that define them. For example, the angle at vertex A enclosed by the rays of an AC is denoted ABAC or B A C. Sometimes, where there is no risk of confusion, the angle may be referred to simply by its vertex. Equivalence angle pairs Potentially, an angle denoted, say, ABAC might refer to any of four angles, the clockwise angle from B to C, the anti-clockwise angle from B to C, the clockwise angle from C to B, or the anti-clockwise angle from C to B where the direction in which the angle is measured determines its sign. However, in many geometrical situations it is obvious from context that the positive angle less than or equal to 180 degrees is meant, and no ambiguity arises. Otherwise, a convention may be adopted so that ABAC always refers to the anti-clockwise angle from B to C, and a cab to the anti-clockwise angle from C to B. The names, intervals, and measured units are shown in a table below. When two straight lines intersect at a point, four angles are formed. Pairwise these angles are named according to their location relative to each other. Vertical and adjacent angle pairs 
A transversal is a line that intersects a pair of lines and is associated with alternate interior angles, corresponding angles, interior angles, and exterior angles. Combining Angle Pairs There are three special angle pairs which involve the summation of angles. Polygon-related angles the size of a geometric angle is usually characterized by the magnitude of the smallest rotation that maps one of the rays into the other. Angles that have the same size are said to be equal or congruent or equal in measure. In some contexts, such as identifying a point on a circle or describing the orientation of an object in two dimensions relative to a reference orientation, Angles that differ by an exact multiple of a full turn are effectively equivalent. In other contexts, such as identifying a point on a spiral curve or describing the cumulative rotation of an object in two dimensions relative to a reference orientation, angles that differ by a non-zero multiple of a full turn are not equivalent. Plane-related angles In order to measure an angle I, a circular arc centered at the vertex of the angle is drawn, e.g. with a pair of compasses. The ratio of the length s of the arc by the radius r of the circle is the measure of the angle in radians. The measure of the angle in another angular unit is then obtained by multiplying its measure in radians by the scaling factor k slash 2i euro, where k is the measure of a complete turn in the chosen unit. The value of I thus defined is independent of the size of the circle, if the length of the radius is changed then the arc length changes in the same proportion, so the ratio S slash R is unaltered. The angle addition postulate states that if B is in the interior of angle A oak, then the measure of the angle A oak is the sum of the measure of angle A O B and the measure of angle Bach. In this postulate it does not matter in which unit the angle is measured as long as each angle is measured in the same unit. Measuring Angles Units used to represent angles are listed below in descending magnitude order. Of these units, the degree and the radian are by far the most commonly used. Angles expressed in radians are dimensionless for the purposes of dimensional analysis. Angle Addition Postulate Most units of angular measurement are defined such that one turn is equal to n units, for some whole number n. The two exceptions are the radian and the diameter part. Right, interior, exterior Although the definition of the measurement of an angle does not support the concept of a negative angle, it is frequently useful to impose a convention that allows positive and negative angular values to represent orientations and slash or rotations in opposite directions relative to some reference. In a two-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system, an angle is typically defined by its two sides, with its vertex at the origin. The initial side is on the positive x-axis while the other side or terminal side is defined by the measure from the initial side in radians, degrees, or turns. With positive angles representing rotations toward the positive y-axis and negative angles representing rotations toward the negative y-axis. When Cartesian coordinates are represented by standard position, defined by the x-axis rightward and the y-axis upward, Positive rotations are anti-clockwise and negative rotations are clockwise. Adjacent, vertical, complementary, supplementary, transversal. In many contexts, an angle of AI is effectively equivalent to an angle of one full turn minus I. For example, an orientation represented as a 45A degree is effectively equivalent to an orientation represented as 360A degree a 45A degree or 315A degree. Although the final position is the same, 
a physical rotation of A45A degree is not the same as a rotation of 315A degree. Units Positive and negative angles Alternative ways of measuring the size of an angle Astronomical approximations In three-dimensional geometry, clockwise and anti-clockwise have no absolute meaning, so the direction of positive and negative angles must be defined relative to some reference which is typically a vector passing through the angle's vertex and perpendicular to the plane in which the rays of the angle lie. Dihedral In navigation, bearings are measured relative to north. By convention, viewed from above, bearing angles are positive clockwise, so a bearing of 45A degree corresponds to a northeast orientation. Negative bearings are not used in navigation, so a northwest orientation corresponds to a bearing of 315A degree. There are several alternatives to measuring the size of an angle by the angle of rotation. The grade of a slope, or gradient is equal to the tangent of the angle, or sometimes the sine. A gradient is often expressed as a percentage. For very small values, the grade of a slope is approximately the measure of the angle in radians. In rational geometry the spread between two lines is defined as the square of the sine of the angle between the lines. As the sine of an angle and the sine of its supplementary angle are the same, any angle of rotation that maps one of the lines into the other leads to the same value for the spread between the lines. A pair of angles opposite each other, formed by two intersecting straight lines that form an X-like shape, are called vertical angles or opposite angles or vertically opposite angles. They are abbreviated as vert. Op. As. Astronomers measure angular separation of objects in degrees from their point of observation. These measurements clearly depend on the individual subject, and the above should be treated as rough rule of thumb approximations only. The angle between a line and a curve or between two intersecting curves is defined to be the angle between the tangents at the point of intersection. Various names have been given to particular cases a euro or sesoidal, biconvex, zestroidal or cistroidal concavo-convex, amphicoelic or angulus lunularis, biconcave. Angles between curves The ancient Greek mathematicians knew how to bisect an angle using only a compass and straightedge, but could only trisect certain angles. In 1837 Pierre Wansel showed that for most angles this construction cannot be performed. In the Euclidean space, the angle I between two Euclidean vectors U and V is related to their dot product and their lengths by the formula. This formula supplies an easy method to find the angle between two planes from their normal vectors and between skew lines from their vector equations. Bisecting and Trisecting Angles Dot Product and Generalizations Inner Product to define angles in an abstract real inner product space, we replace the Euclidean dot product by the inner product, I, A, A, I copyright, I. E. In a complex inner product space, the expression for the cosine above may give non-real values, so it is replaced with. Or, more commonly, using the absolute value, with. The latter definition ignores the direction of the vectors and thus describes the angle between one-dimensional subspaces, span, A, U, and, span, A, V, spanned by the vectors, U, and, V, correspondingly. The definition of the angle between one-dimensional subspaces, span, A, U, and, 
span, A, V, given by angles between subspaces. In a Hilbert space can be extended to subspaces of any finite dimensions. Given two subspaces, U, W, with, dim, A, U, equals, K, A per thousand, dim, A, W, equals, L, this leads to a definition of, K, angles called canonical or principal angles between subspaces. In Riemannian geometry, the metric tensor is used to define the angle between two tangents. Where U and V are tangent vectors and G I J are the components of the metric tensor G. A hyperbolic angle is an argument of a hyperbolic function just as the circular angle is the argument of a circular function. The comparison can be visualized as the size of the openings of a hyperbolic sector and a circular sector since the areas of these sectors correspond to the angle magnitudes in each case. Unlike the circular angle, the hyperbolic angle is unbounded. When the circular and hyperbolic functions are viewed as infinite series in their angle argument, the circular ones are just alternating series forms of the hyperbolic functions. This weaving of the two types of angle and function was explained by Leonhard Euler in Introduction to the Analysis of the Infinite. In geography, the location of any point on the Earth can be identified using a geographic coordinate system. This system specifies the latitude and longitude of any location in terms of angles subtended at the center of the Earth, using the equator and the Greenwich meridian as references. In astronomy, a given point on the celestial sphere can be identified using any of several astronomical coordinate systems where the references vary according to the particular system. Astronomers measure the angular separation of two stars by imagining two lines through the center of the Earth, each intersecting one of the stars. The angle between those lines can be measured, and is the angular separation between the two stars. In both geography and astronomy, a sighting direction can be specified in terms of a vertical angle such as altitude slash elevation with respect to the horizon as well as the azimuth with respect to north. Astronomers also measure the apparent size of objects as an angular diameter. For example, the full moon has an angular diameter of approximately 0.5 a degree, when viewed from Earth. One could say, the moon's diameter subtends an angle of half a degree. The small angle formula can be used to convert such an angular measurement into a distance-slash-size ratio. Attribution Angles in Riemannian geometry Hyperbolic angle Angles in geography and astronomy Notes Complementary angles are angle pairs whose measures sum to one right angle. If the two complementary angles are adjacent their non-shared sides form a right angle. In Euclidean geometry, the two acute angles in a right triangle are complementary, because the sum of internal angles of a triangle is 180 degrees, and the right angle itself accounts for 90 degrees. Two angles that sum to a complete angle are called explementary angles or conjugate angles, the difference between an angle and a complete angle is termed the explement of the angle or conjugate of an angle. 0.5 a degree is approximately the width of the sun or moon, 1 a degree is approximately the width of a little finger at arm's length, 1 0 a degree is approximately the width of a closed fist at arm's length. 2-0 a degree is approximately the width of a hand span at arm's length. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Chisholm, Hugh, ed., Angle, Encyclopædia Britannica, 2, Cambridge University Press, p. 14.